In this video, we are going to learn how to plot an inequality. Um, if you haven't watched the video on how to write an inequality from a word problem, I would very much suggest going and doing that first. I'll put a little uh, pin in the top right uh, so you can click on it if you need to. Um, go watch it first. Evidence-wise, again, we're going to need to know how to make an inequality from word problem. Uh, after that, we start the new things, understand the different notation uh, for plotting an inequality. There are four of them total. Um, then we're going to practice plotting them on a number line. You will notice that unlike some of the other plotting that we've been doing recently, this is on a number line and not a coordinate plane. Our learning experience is down there. You're definitely going to want to take notes on the next slide. One important thing to remember from this is that inequalities have an infinite number of solutions. Um, You'll remember from the last video that we talked about how something like x is less than or equal to 3 has an infinite number of solutions. You could have 2 as a solution because 2 is less than or equal to 3. 3 is less than or equal to 3. Well, we could have a 1, we could have a negative 1, 0. There are so many different numbers that we could go for. Uh, so we can't really just put a point on a number line and call it good if we have to do something a little bit more. So, uh, the important thing to do here is to think about what is the number that you have, find it on your number line, and then look at your inequality. This is going to tell you two very, very important things. First off, if you have a less than, um, that means that your arrow, because you're going to draw a point with an arrow on it, is going to be going to the left. If you were to have a greater than, which we don't in this case, but let's say if x was greater than, then in that case our arrow would be pointing to the right, like so. Now, this only works if the variable is already on the left. If the variable is on the right, you just have to reverse these two things. Um, if you haven't done so already, by the way, copy this table down. This could be incredibly useful for you. The next to th thing to think about is whether it's non-inclusive or inclusive. That just means, does our inequality have the little line underneath it, meaning that it would be or equal to. If it is not inclusive, it, if it does not include the value, we are going to draw a hollow point. And that's going to go for whether it's less than or greater than. So it looks something like that. If it does include the number, it's inclusive, kind of like in this example, then we're going to draw a solid point uh, on our number line, like so. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's um, greater than or less than, as long as it's or equal to, we're going to have this solid point like so. That means that when we plot this, we know that we have a less than that's inclusive, so we know that for this example, we're going to need this thing. So we're going to go back to 3. We are going to draw a solid point. We are going to draw an arrow that goes to the left. Again, remember that this only works well if your variable is already on the left, like it is here. If not, you just switch um, which direction your arrows are going and we'll be fine. So let's look at an example where we have a word problem. The number of potatoes Sasha eats is greater than four. So we're going to just come up with our own variable since it doesn't give us a variable. Let's use P for potatoes. And we know that the number of potatoes has to be greater than 4. So we can write this inequality, p is greater than 4. To plot this now, we're again going to look at what is our value. It's a 4, so we're going to find 4 on our number line. And then we're going to look at our inequality. 
In this case, it is not a p is greater or equal to 4, so this means it's non-inclusive. Which kind of point are we going to use then? If you guessed a hollow point, you are exactly correct. And um, since it's a greater than, we know that our arrow is going to be going to the right in this case. So if we plot it, it should look like this. And that's it. It's not too bad, uh, especially compared to some of the things we've been doing. That's all you got to do. If, just for argument's sake, if you wrote this as 4 is less than p, which you could do, it would still be the same thing. It's still non-inclusive, so you would still have your hollow point. The only difference is, even though this is a less than, because the p is on the other side, we would still draw our arrow to the right. It doesn't actually matter what your inequality looks like. It's just that chart that we used in the previous slide. Rewind to it if you need to look at it again. Um, the arrows are going to be flipped. Really, though, if you use logic, 4 is less than p, so p must be greater than 4. It's not that bad. So let's move on to a you do. You are going to write and plot an inequality for this word problem. You're obviously going to have to make your own number line on your paper. It could look like that if you want to. Uh, you could make it bigger. Um, I wouldn't make it smaller, uh, but see what you need. So the problem that we're working on is Sam wants to make french fries. To make enough for his friends, he needs at least six potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Pause the video. Make your inequality. Plot your inequality. Um, and then we'll move on to the next problem. Ready, go. So things to remember. Um, since there are an infinite number of solutions to an inequality, an inequality, um, we need to be able to plot our solutions on a number line. That way it shows all of the possibilities. Uh, the chart there um, is going to help you do so. Uh, it'll help you with which point you should use and what direction your line should go. If you didn't re, uh, write it down when we did it initially, I would pause the video now and write it down. Um, however, remember that this only works if your variable's on the left side. Uh, if it's on the right, you'll just have to use the arrow that goes in the opposite direction. That's all you need to do. So for suggested practice problems, we have five of them plus a bonus challenge, which we didn't talk about. I just want to see if anybody wants to try it. Uh, for one through three, you're just going to plot the inequalities. No word problems, just plot them, make some number lines. Uh, how are you going to make your points and which arrow direction are the arrows going to go? In four through five, you're going to create an inequality and plot for each word problem. Uh, you have two of them there. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. So good luck. You may have noticed in this video, by the way, uh, that there are a lot of things about potatoes. Why is there so much things about potatoes in this video? I just think they're neat.